AMD today announced a ton of CPUs, GPUs, and SOC, which is a, a Z2, for gaming handhelds and some mobile parts. The 9950X3D and 9900X3D are part of this. The Ryzen Z2 SOC is the one for handhelds, so the predecessor was used in things like the ROG Ally. And uh, then they've also got RDNA 4 GPUs that they have announced, but they haven't given a lot of information on. We still have everything they've uh, given us, though. And those would be the 9070, yes, actual name, and 9070 XT. And then otherwise, they have a, a bunch of mobile CPUs. But our focus is going to be on RDNA 4, Zen 5, X3D, and the Z2. Let's get into it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Lian Li Lee and the O11D Evo RGB case. The O11D Evo RGB is an updated entry to the famed O11 lineup, retaining heavy support for fan mounts, drive mount locations, and flexibility on component mounting, such as two options for the power supply. The O11D Evo RGB's dual chamber approach aims to maximize cable storage on the backside to streamline cable management. Coupling this with a unique vertical GPU mount to showcase the most expensive part in most systems. Learn more at the link in the description below. We'll start with the Andy's GPU news. It's the quickest. That could be a good or a bad thing, <laughs> depending on what they announce a little bit later. But AMD announced the existence of its Radeon RX 9070 series. It's going to be the 9070 and the 9070 XT. Nothing else has been announced at this time. They noted a quarter one 2025 availability. For the specs, they are extremely limited. The company did picture several partner models in its uh, announcement slide. This includes at least one that's a Yeston model, a NASRock model, XFX, and all the others listed in the corner. The cards pictured are generally three fan coolers. Some of them are two to three slots thick uh, with three slot brackets, which is nice. AMD says the GPUs will use its RDNA 4 architecture and will utilize a four nanometer process from TSMC. AMD mostly described its specs with adjectives, which is unfortunately not actually useful. Words like optimized compute units, supercharged AI compute, and improved ray tracing per CU don't really tell us a whole lot, so we're just going to have to wait for more real information. Likewise, AMD announced that Fidelity FX Super Resolution 4, or FSR 4, will be released and has been built for RDNA 4. It intends to relaunch its anti-lag software solution that was intended to compete with Reflex, anti-lag plus anyway. The company will now be launching anti lag 2 as the next iteration and we were not pre-briefed with any further information than this at the time of the briefing for these uh, software solutions. The company is clearly self-aware though. It has also presented a slide about its naming choices for the 9070 series. Go figure on that. This slide shows that AMD intends to line up the 9070 series including both the XT and non-XT models with the RX 7900 XT from the current uh, or will be soon prior generation down to the middle of the RX 7800 XT, whatever that means in this graphic. The worst 9070 uh, class card is apparently half of one RX 7800 XT, or maybe that means one and a half 7800 XTs. I don't know. All we're missing at this point is some text on the image that says not to scale. But uh, anyway, against NVIDIA, this roughly positions the 9070 as comparable, according to AMD's image, to the 4070 Ti and the 4070 Super. We won't get out our scrying stones too much for this hastily thrown together image since it's hard to judge without real numbers, but uh, that's at least how AMD seems to be positioning it. The company claims the change is to line up with its Ryzen 9000 CPUs and says it will reserve 8,000 for naming parts for mobile. So on to the CPU side of the news, AMD's two new desktop CPUs predictably are the 9950X3D and the 9900X3D. These use the Zen 5 architecture that shipped at the end of the last year. They follow up the wildly successful 9800X3D, which has been constantly out of stock since it launched due to the demand. It's a very well received CPU for gaming. Uh, so these two are the follow-ups. The 9950X3D is a 16-core, 32-thread part. It advertises a maximum boost frequency of what AMD says is, quote, up to 5.7 gigahertz. It notes a 144 megabyte total cache size. And at the time of writing this, AMD has not provided pricing details to us or a specific release date beyond sometime within the next few months. Possible to get more specific on the day this video goes live, but in the pre-brief, we weren't given this information. For comparison, the 9800X3D has a total 104 megabyte cache and $480 MSRP. This is the part that's already out. 
The advertised boost of the 9800 XPD for comparison is 5.2 gigahertz. So the 9950 XPD has a greater cache size and may benefit from higher boosting. The kind of key here is gonna be in how those threads are scheduled and how the cores are parked depending on the application being run. So that 144 megabyte cache on the 9950 XPD comes in part because of the additional CCD. It's got more cores, uh, another CCD, it's got cache in it as well. So it is a single extra stacked cache die on one of the two CCDs with the remainder being a sort of normal CCD. And uh, this is where, as it's been in the past, there will be one that can run at potentially a higher frequency and one that has the extra cache uh, and they, they don't overlap. So they kind of can distribute the workload depending on the type of application and how the scheduling is managed and uh, gets into a bit of a mess with how Windows behaves and how chipset drivers behave. But we've talked about all of that in the past and it is still a changing subject. Anyway, we'll explore all of that in our review. The 9900X3D is a 12 core, 24 thread part. It has an advertised boost of 5.5 gigahertz max. It has 140 megabytes for the total cache. And then the 9950X3D runs a 170 watt TDP with the 9900X3D at 120 watts. The 9800X3D from previously is also 120 watts. And because of this, the 9800X3D may benefit from additional power available during fully loaded workloads. There could be some shuffling of the CPU stack and specific benchmarks due to the power budget differences. So that's just always interesting where the power budget can be the constraint, it often is. And if two parts have the same power budget, one has more cores, depending on the workload, it's really workload dependent. You could end up in a situation where the higher core count part has worse performance uh, because the additional power budget is being burned on keeping more cores operational. That may not be in use. It's super dependent on the workload. I'm sure we'll get into these scenarios in the review. But some of this over the years has gotten better. So AMD has specifically been working on its chipset driver as it relates to core parking. And that is something that uh, they are continuing through this launch. So in theory, the chipset drivers should more intelligently park the cores that are not uh, ideal for the workload on these 9950X3D and 9900X3D parts. And that should make it easier for users to upgrade in socket without needing to worry about if they need to blow away their whole Windows OS and replace it, like was kind of what our suggestion would have been in the past. There are things you could do in Windows to try and skip that step, but uh, normally with Windows, we prefer to just start fresh if you're starting to play games with it. So anyway, should be better with the updated chipset driver. And uh, that's something that's been rolling out since the Zen 5 launch now. So some of that isn't necessarily strictly news. AMD published some first party claims for the 9950X3D and the 9900X3D as well. As usual, we'll have our own numbers soon. Every third party who's reviewing it will, and you should pay attention to those people or us for your information on whether to buy the part. But just to set the bar for what we are verifying against and what AMD's claims are, we'll look at their numbers too. So AMD says this is the world's quote, best gaming processor, though note that they are comparing it to the 7950X3D and the 9950X3D here is shown as being on average 8% better across 40 games that AMD tested first party with a range of no change to a 58% claimed uplift over baseline compared to the 7950X3D. AMD also claims that it outperforms the 285K by 20% on average across 40 games. We definitely believe this based on the numbers we ran for the 9800X3D and the 285K already. Its first party numbers also point to performance improvement in Blender with lesser improvements in Photoshop and Premiere and Puget Bench testing against AMD's own prior processor of a similar config. So historically, these types of CPUs from AMD don't provide significant benefits over the single CCD setups in gaming applications. Where these really would start to make more sense, like the 9950X3D, uh, might be if you do a good amount of gaming, but you also need those extra cores for non-gaming tasks and uh, you don't want to just go to the higher core count at the sacrifice of gaming. There's some non-gaming workloads that can make use of the extra cache as well, but that's kind of generally where we see them positioned. Uh, in other words, the 9800X3D could perform equal to or close enough to the 9950X3D that it would still make far more sense from a value standpoint and for gaming and ease of setup. However, you do have the downside of a lower core count. So that's where that distinction is drawn. Uh, in the past, this was a very specific line in the sand 
where our reviews were sort of, if you're just gaming, don't buy the 7950X3D because historically, uh, especially at the beginning, it was more annoying to work with. And that's changed over time, remember, but uh, it was way more annoying to work with at the very start. And then it was often a lot more expensive. And if you were only gaming, you weren't really going to get that value versus a 7800X3D. Now, whether that remains true for the 9950X3D, uh, could, could actually change because of some of these chipset changes they're doing. And of course, the price is going to dictate all of this too. So anyway, that's kind of where we think they're going to land. And now we can get to some of the other parts. AMD's Z2 SoC follows up the Z1, predictably, and the Z1 Extreme. Uh, so these are mobile solutions that were found on handheld devices in the previous generation. AMD has also offered mobile parts like the 7840U and the 8840U that are comparable to uh, the Z series parts. Uh, with some differences between them. Now, the Z2 is light on information as well, like the rest of the stuff. We mostly know it exists. There's some basics, though, and some specs. So uh, AMD, again, defers to descriptors like breathtaking and exhilarating speed, which we assume is the next speed setting for a Back to the Future movie. It also gets into some businessy stuff, like the addressable market and increase in competition in the market. As for actual news, the Z2 family comes in three variations currently announced. The Z2 Extreme, the Z2 Go, and the Z2 Non-Extreme Non-Go. The Z2 Extreme and Z2 are both eight core 16 thread parts with the same cache and a boost frequency separated only by 100 megahertz. The actual change comes in the form of the integrated graphics solution. This is also where the Z1 and the Z1 Extreme deviated most heavily. The configurable TDP allows up to five watts more driven to the Z2 Extreme, which will cost battery life, but help power the GPU. The Z2 has a higher boost clock despite a lower CTDP, likely due to overall package budget allocation with the GPU change and also density. The Z2 Go is new. This is a four core, eight thread part. It only boosts to 4.3 gigahertz maximum advertised, which is pretty low. Uh, it only has 10 megabytes of cache. It keeps the 15 to 30 watt CTDP and it keeps the 12 CUs. This CPU is far weaker than the others listed here, especially with that clock drop. So we're curious to see what types of devices make the best use of it. I will also be curious to see the battery life and if it's able to stick closer to that 15 watt number while still providing meaningful performance. These are all listed for quarter one 2025 availability. So uh, we're going to be slammed getting a, a CPU testing, the GPU testing, and it looks like our handheld testing back up and running. Um, we'll do our best to do all of them, but uh, we ran several reviews last generation for handhelds. They're a lot of fun to do. They're very interesting reviews because there's mechanical, thermal, uh, performance and everything. So we will uh, do a full refresh on all of that, plus the new devices as they come out. Uh, it is going to be lower priority for us, though, than the desktop parts. All right, AMD HX3D is up next. I would like to dedicate this next section to our late friend Gordon Ma Un who uh, once joined me to complain about Anthony's mobile CPU naming scheme. Yeah, it's like, uh, if you have, if you need a decoding wheel with four levers of decode rings, you probably have too many CPUs. Five. So is it five? So here's to you, Gordon, because AMD's new mobile CPU is fire range. That's not the part. Uh, it is the fire range AMD Ryzen 9 9950HX3D for 1H2025. So uh, it's joining the 9950, it's joining the 9955HX for our editors. Leave that in there. It, it makes my point. And the 9850HX mobile parts, uh, but it's the, it's the 9955HX3D. Anyway, the new AMD 99, he would have loved that name, 9955HX3D is advertised as what AMD claims is the best gaming and content creation part for mobile. We don't really test mobile, but we certainly use high-end laptops for our travel and editing stations. Uh, so maybe we'll try them out. The 9955HX3D is a 16-core, 32-thread, eight-character name part that boosts up to 5.4 gigahertz. It has 144 megabytes of cache and a TDP of 54 watts. The 9955HX is the same, but with less cache and fewer letters and numbers. And the 9850HX has fewer fives than either of them and fewer letters and numbers. That's a 12 core 24 thread part with lower boost, 
No X3D cache by mercy of its easier name and the same TDP. Now, AMD also spent time in its pre-briefing and uh, the slides it sent out to talk about its new AI brand name mobile processors. This is not an area where we focus, at least currently, and it's not something we're going to cover. So you'll have to check someone else out for that coverage. Not really our area of a focus. We'll uh, stick to the stuff we know best. So that's it for now. Uh, we've got a ton of work to do. We're going to be testing the CPUs as soon as we're able to get them. Same for the GPUs. And then the Z2 components are pretty high up on our list as well for things of interest. Um, realistically, that is going to be an enormous undertaking to do all that stuff in the same quarter. So uh, we will see how well we keep up. The, the handhelds might get kicked back into summer or something. But anyway, we'll have a lot of cool stuff for you this year. I'm actually really excited for the amount of testing we get to do. And check back for all that. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net if you want to grab a shirt like this one. These are brand new, just released Disappointment for 2024 t-shirts with all the most disappointing launches of last year on them. And then also the oxidized hourglass of disappointing sand. <laughs> Uh, on the front of the shirt stemming from the Intel oxidized CPU. So you can grab that on the store to support us directly. Subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.